Shui Mei is a housewife. Outsiders envy her for having a handsome and wealthy husband, but only she knows how dull her life truly is. At night, the feeling of loneliness overwhelms her. Her husband, Wang Li, is a key employee at his company, always busy with business trips, sometimes for a week, other times for a month or two. All her friends envy Shui Mei, thinking she found a great husband, but only she knows the real situation. Besides being rich, Wang Li is not an ideal husband. His frequent business trips leave her alone at home. This time, when Wang Li was away again, Shui Mei felt bored and invited her best friend, Fei Fei, to go shopping. Money is the one thing Shui Mei doesn't lack, thanks to her husband's credit card, which has never reached its limit. Fei Fei spotted a watch costing over 5,000 yuan. Shui Mei generously offered to buy it for her. The cashier swiped the card, and Fei Fei couldn't hide her excitement. You're so lucky. Your husband lets you spend freely. Unlike me, I have to work hard for everything. I can't even afford a down payment for a house. Your husband is truly a great man. I envy you so much. You only know part of it, Shui Mei replied, masking her true feelings. Despite their close friendship, she had never confided in Fei Fei about her marital problems. Shui Mei had to endure her discomfort alone. Women sometimes share a silent understanding. Fei Fei suggested, I know a good massage parlor. You'll feel refreshed after a session. I'm sure you'll like it. Laughing and teasing each other, they arrived at the parlor. It wasn't large, but it was tastefully decorated. Shui Mei immediately noticed a shy, youthful boy standing there, nervously rubbing his hands on his clothes. He seemed new and a bit reserved. Seeing Shui Mei's interest, Fei Fei insisted on selecting the boy for her, ignoring Shui Mei's protests. She also picked a muscular man for herself. While Shui Mei's thoughts wandered, she felt a warm touch on her back. It was the boy massaging her skin. Her face flushed as this was the first man besides her husband to touch her. How's the pressure, ma'am? Let me know if it's too much. The boy's gentle voice added fuel to the fire in Shui Mei's heart. After the massage, her face still had a rosy glow. Can I add you on WeChat? The boy asked. Shui Mei hesitated, but eventually agreed. His name was Wei Ming, and judging by the name, he seemed to be a sunny, handsome boy. On the way home, Shui Mei couldn't help but smile at Wei Ming's profile picture. Fei Fei teased her, saying, You like younger guys, huh? These boys are easy to handle. Just give them money, and you know the rest. Though Shui Mei entertained the idea, she reprimanded Fei Fei. Stop talking nonsense. He's just a kid, and I'm a married woman. Fei Fei just smiled knowingly. Back home, Shui Mei received a message from Wei Ming. She blushed and felt like a teenager in love as she started chatting with him. Wei Ming occasionally sent voice messages, which Shui Mei listened to repeatedly, enchanted by his voice. Through their chats, she learned that Wei Ming was new in town, working to support his poor family and three younger siblings. Moved by his plight, Shui Mei decided to frequent the massage parlor to help Wei Ming earn more commission. Since Wang Li was away for two months, she could visit several times. A few days later, she booked the most luxurious room and ordered the most expensive oils, determined to boost Wei Ming's performance metrics. That night, Shui Mei returned to the massage parlor alone. Wei Ming greeted her warmly, Ma'am, you're here. Seeing his bright smile and dimples, Shui Mei felt her heart burst like fireworks. As things progressed naturally, she and Wei Ming quickly fell into an intimate relationship. After one night together, Shui Mei lazily lay in Wei Ming's arms. Why don't you quit this job? Tell me how much you need, and I'll give it to you, she offered. Wei Ming was surprised but saw the opportunity. Ma'am, you're so kind to me, he said. Shui Mei gave him 100,000 yuan, which he said was enough for his sibling's education. She even rented him a small apartment, paying a year's rent up front. One day, while they were together at the apartment, Wang Li called. Panicking, Shui Mei pushed Wei Ming away. It's my husband, she whispered, hastily getting dressed. On the call, Wang Li said, Honey, I'm back home. Where are you? Come back soon. I miss you. I'm out with Fei Fei for tea. I'll be home soon, she lied, grabbing her bag and rushing out. At home, Wang Li hugged and kissed her, but she felt uneasy and stiff. I'll take a shower first she said, spending a long time in the bathroom, ensuring there were no traces of her affair. Wang Li continued his frequent business trips, and Shui Mei often visited Wei Ming's apartment. Their affair deepened, but Wei Ming started asking, 
Why don't you divorce your husband if you don't love him? I'd marry you. Xue Mei smiled without answering. Wei Ming was too naive. Coming from a modest background, marrying Wang Li was a huge blessing for her. His family's wealth and status were all thanks to Wang Li. Without him, she wouldn't have met Wei Ming. Despite enjoying her time with Wei Ming, Xue Mei always felt guilty afterward. She still loved Wang Li, who had always been kind and generous, never losing his temper in their many years of marriage. One day, Wang Li asked about a 100,000 yuan transfer. That was for Wei Ming, she thought but lied, saying, Oh, I gave it to my mom. She suddenly wanted to get a driver's license and buy a car. You're not angry, are you? Wang Li smiled. Of course not. I was just curious. You've worked hard all these years. I know I can't satisfy you in some ways, so I try my best in others. By the way, I've taken a leave next month. Let's go to Sanya for a vacation. I haven't spent much time with you lately. His words made Shue may feel even more ashamed, and tears welled up in her eyes. Wang Li wiped her tears. Why are you crying? Who upset you? Recalling her mistakes, she choked. No one. I just think you're really good to me. I don't deserve you. Wang Li hugged her. Silly, that's what a husband should do. I'll be busy for a while, but then we'll go to Sanya. He kissed her forehead and left for his business trip. Normally, Xue Mei would visit Wei Ming as soon as Wang Li left, but this time, she felt conflicted. Wei Ming sent a message, I saw your husband leave with his suitcase yesterday. Why haven't you come to see me? How did he know Wang Li left? Was he watching her? This was terrifying. Confronting Wei Ming, she asked, Are you spying on me? As soon as Xue Mei entered Wei Ming's apartment, she began to question. Sister, I just missed you too much. You are the only person I have in this city. That's why I was waiting downstairs of your apartment. Sister, in the past, as soon as your husband left, you would immediately come to find me. Now why aren't you as eager? Wei Ming tried to embrace Xue Mei and attempt to kiss but was stopped by her saying, Wei Ming, I think it's time for us to say it's over. I want to return to a normal life. Tell me how much money you want. I'll give it to you and after that, we shouldn't see each other anymore. Wei Ming's eyes widened in disbelief. Do you know what you're saying? We're perfect together. I don't want your money. I want you. Realizing Wei Ming had genuine feelings, Xue Mei knew it would be tough to break away. She slapped him, both of them shocked by her action. Wei Ming, now furious, threatened. You're going to pay for this. We'll keep our affair going. Or you give me 200,000 yuan, and I'll disappear. Despite her discomfort, Xue Mei agreed to pay, hoping to salvage her marriage. However, secrets don't stay hidden forever. Wang Li discovered the affair. You've been cheating on me, he yelled. Caught. Xue Mei tearfully begged for forgiveness. I was impulsive. I've cut ties with him. Please, give me another chance. Enraged, Wang Li slapped her. You cheat and expect me to forgive you? He beat her. The room filled with the sounds of his belt and her cries. An hour later, exhausted, he said, let's divorce. No matter how much Xue Mei pleaded, Wang Li remained resolute. As the guilty party, she left with nothing. Xue Mei lost her status, her parents lost their city home, and she moved back to a rural house with her parents. She no longer had the glamorous appearance she once had, now resembling a rural woman. Her once fair skin had lost its luster. Friends who once enjoyed her company now avoided her. Xue Mei became a pariah. One day, she went back to Wei Ming's apartment, only to find that he had moved out. The tenant had changed, and Wei Ming was nowhere to be found. Xue Mei had transformed from a wealthy lady to a forlorn outcast. Through this ordeal, Xue Mei learned some valuable lessons. It's important to cherish what you have, and not always focus on what you lack. If she had appreciated her life with Wang Li, she wouldn't have altered her fate so drastically, ending up in her current predicament. This outcome was entirely of her own making.